I want to take a few minutes today to talk to you about how to keep your healing. First of all, if you've just been touched by the Lord and received health in your body, isn't it great? I mean, praise God for His goodness, for His mercy, and for His healing power. But what I've come to see in different individuals from time to time is they will legitimately be healed by the Lord, but through certain circumstances and set of events, uh, their sickness or their problem comes back on them. And I want to make sure that doesn't happen to you today. So let me share with you a, a couple scriptures from the Word of God that will help you to stay in the place of victory and in the place of healing. In the New Testament book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, one of the things that Paul teaches there is about the armor of God. All right, telling us that we, of course, don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the, the, the spiritual forces, uh, the, the demonic spirits and so forth. One of the things he says that we should take up, it says in the 16th verse, is, to, is that above all, taking the shield of faith with, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Okay, not only can we see here that the wicked one throws fiery darts at us, but we can also see that the shield of faith will keep them from us. You know, many people today live uh, basically as if their faith is to be used for pulling out fiery darts. That is not the object objective. God really set this up so, so our shield of faith would keep those fiery darts from ever touching us. Now, thank God our faith does work to get us healed, but you know what it's intended for? Is to keep us healed, to keep us living in divine health, in protection, in, in provision, in all areas of our life. And so we want to keep our shield up. I want to encourage you today, you've been healed. I want to encourage you to keep your shield up so you don't end up in the healing line again. You don't, you're not needing prayer from others again for this same condition. You can keep your healing. It belongs to you in Christ. And so, like I said, it's, it's not uncommon for an individual after they receive healing from the Lord to have an opportunity to go back, to begin experiencing again those problems they've already been set free from. We shouldn't expect it. I don't see it in all circumstances by any means. But again, it's not uncommon to hear, hear reports of symptoms trying to come back on a person. If that happens to you, uh, don't be surprised. Don't be shaken by it. Don't think, ah, there's something wrong with me. How did this come back? Maybe my healing wasn't real to begin with. Of course it was real. Of course you experienced God. Just don't be surprised because this is easily dealt with. Very easy to deal with. Let me show you what Jesus said about this subject over in Matthew chapter 12. Uh, in Matthew 12, Jesus specifically was talking about unclean spirits, but we can get the principle here uh, about how the kingdom of dark, darkness operates, how the devil operates. In, in Matthew 12, verse 43, Jesus said, When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest, and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes out. Uh, he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it be with this wicked generation. He goes on to teach. But we can see here the mindset, the mentality, how the enemy, once he is booted, once he loses territory, how he will try to come and retake that ground. Now, he may try to come and retake you in the sense of bringing back sickness and disease, those problems that you all have already been healed from. 
Now, I know this is talking about a specific type of spirit, this unclean spirit here. Uh, and that might not be what you're, what you're dealing with or what you have been set free from. But again, you can see the devil's mindset. One of the key words in this passage that I see is the word empty. In other words, the enemy was driven out, but when he came back, he found the place cleaned out, empty. In other words, ready to reoccupy with seven of his demon buddies. Now, what we need to do is just recognize as soon as I'm set free, as soon as I'm healed and delivered from a, a circumstance, a, a disease, I need to make sure that I'm full. I don't want to leave any space for anything to come back. So we don't just want to be healed or delivered. We want the problem to go and something better to come. All right. Not just get rid of the bad, but be filled with the good. In this case, it would do us a whole lot of good to once we receive healing to continue to meditate and think about the the words, the promises, the, our, our redemption in Christ, healing scriptures. If I'll continue to keep those in my heart and mind, I stay occupied with God's word. I stay full of his presence. When the enemy comes to bring it back, there's no space for him. There's no room for him to bring back that problem. And so I want to continue to think about, to meditate on God's word. I want to continue to, to be in thanksgiving, sharing my testimony, giving praise and thanks to the Lord uh, for the healing that I have received from him. Okay? And so uh, the other thing that we do in response to the temptation to go backwards or the feeling of certain symptoms coming back on our body is we do James chapter 4 and verse 7, all right? Uh, in James 4 and verse 7, James writes here what we should do with the devil. It's very simple, it's very clear, but it's amazing how many people are just crying out to God for help when they should be doing James 4, 7, all right? Okay, put yourself in the circumstance. Now, this situation, symptoms are coming back. Problems coming back to you. James 4, 7 says... Therefore, submit to God, okay, do whatever he says, always in submission, obedience to the Lord, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Okay, so when this spirit, or this, you know, this symptom, this disease has left you, and then it comes back with seven of its buddies, what are we going to do? We're not going to give in, we're not going to freak out, we're not going to say, ah, why is this happening? We're not surprised, that's his M.O., all right, well, what are we going to do? We are going to resist the devil. And what will he do? He will flee from us. All right, this is God's word. You resist, he flees. Okay, symptoms come, what do we do? Very appropriate to just simply say, absolutely not. I am not going to have this. I resist this disease. I resist these symptoms. Devil, you leave me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is simply our stand of faith, rehearsing what's already been done and, and standing our ground. But this is an area where often people lose the battle because it catches them off guard. They're empty instead of staying full of the word, full of thanksgiving, full, full of praise. And they don't stand up when those symptoms come. I remember a, a woman uh, years ago had been in... Uh, this meeting and she was having uh, female issues like cramping with her menstrual cycle that kind of stuff really severe to the point where she would be in bed uh, at that time of the month and she came to this meeting and she was healed in the service all the symptoms left all the pain left and it was gone month after month she was just you know gloriously set free it was it was really a good thing but what happened is what she came back and told me that six months later, all of a sudden, all the symptoms returned. All of a sudden, it was just like it used to be. And what she did at that point made all the difference in the world. Some, they passively sit back and accept it and think, well, here it is again, and they allow it to remain. 
But what she did in this situation is she did James 4, 7. She stood, she resisted the devil. She said, absolutely not, I'm not going to have this. And you know what happened? That problem left her for good. Again, should we be surprised if the enemy tries to bring back what we've been healed of? No. Should we be troubled? No. Should we be afraid? Absolutely not. We just stand our ground. We speak in the name of Jesus. We give him all the praise. And I tell you, the enemy has no place to bring these things back to your life. Let me encourage you today. You're healed. You can stay that way. It's good to be healed. It's better to stay healed, to live in the health that God provides us every single day.